When I pray, when I am preparing for a homily, I use a method that anybody can use and for any passages to come to understand more effectively what the real meaning is that the Holy Spirit's trying to get through to me. Lexio Divina, divine reading. The first time I read through, I make sure I understand what the story is, then I understand all the words and a little bit of the context. The second or third time I'm reading it, I also try and read it aloud because my ears hear things that my eyes miss. The third or fourth time, I take a lot longer with it and I read for understanding, I read to contemplate, I think about it as I'm going. Who's saying what? Why are they saying it? How's it being received? <clears throat> Sometimes it's, it's useful for me to put myself in the scene, to imagine being there. Like with Cleopas and his friend, when Jesus met them, they were, they were lost. They, they had thought that Jesus was going to be acclaimed, the, the Messiah, the Christ, and the priest killed him. They didn't have a clue what that meant. I mean, they were, his, they were following him. He was their leader. He's dead. Does that mean that the priests are going to come after them? Does that mean, how do you follow someone who's dead? And they didn't know what was going to happen. They were, they were lost. And then when Jesus was explaining to them all the, the prophecies, all the scriptures where the Messiah was mentioned, their hearts were on fire, they said. Mine would have been, too, to have the Lord explain how it all works. That would have been so wonderful. And then after Jesus disappeared, had appeared to them, and then was no longer there, they're excited again. They, they had hope. They said, we got to get back to Jerusalem. And I bet you that trip back took a lot less time than the trip from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And think about what it was like in the room the upper, the upper room where the 11 were and where they all met. There was hope. There was elation. There was joy. Jesus was alive. They weren't sure how that was all going to work out, but they were sure that he was going to help them. After numerous readings and, and working through the coming, let the Spirit talk to me, uh, Deacon Keating called it marinating in the readings. The message that I wanted to share with you today is from the very last line. He was made known to them in the breaking of bread. He was made known to them in the breaking of bread. I wasn't Catholic growing up. I attended three separate mainstream Protestant denominations with my family. I did Sunday school, vacation Bible school. We did the after, after school formation. I even went to church camp one summer. I read the whole Bible all the way through and I could safely say that I knew all about Jesus, but I didn't know him. I knew that he did, lived 2000 years ago. He was the son of God. He died, he's in heaven, he's gonna judge us. I didn't know him and I didn't, no one had ever told me I needed to and no one had ever told me for sure how you would even do that. Until I was a freshman in college, I found the Catholic Church had a different story. Jesus isn't just in heaven. He's here on the altar. He's in the tabernacle. He's in the Eucharist and he's real. And we come to know him when we go through the breaking of the bread. I came to know him in the breaking of the bread. At every consecration during every mass, the priest breaks one of the host. Every time we receive a host, it's a small little portion that's been broken off from all the others. We receive Jesus, the creator of the universe, personally every time we receive communion. Now we've been and are still in a really, really weird time when we are not allowed to receive Jesus in the same way, but it's gonna change. And 
even if we haven't been able to, if we received him before, he's still in us. He doesn't come with a, with a, you know, cancellation date. Not best if used by. If we know Jesus, we know him, he's still with us. And also I love the, the spiritual prayer, this prayer of spiritual communion that we've been doing. It says, come to me as if I've already received you. And he's God, he can do that. Knowing that we, we come to know him in the breaking of the bread, it's my fervent hope and prayer that each one of us in the near future get the opportunity to again attend a mass, accept Jesus, come to know him, and come to know him in a more deeper and more loving and a more personal way.